What we have in the shop today to work on is a fixed displacement axial piston motor that is reversible or bi-directional. Well, how do you know it's all those things? Well, that's because I know the application it came off of and I was the guy that took it off. So that was pretty handy. Makes me look smart. But there are some clues to tell us that. The motor part, let's start with it. The head here has the same size fittings on each side. Hmm, that's kind of handy. Another thing, it says A and B for work ports. A work port, B work port. Kind of a good clue. There's a tag that nobody can read anymore, but it might be helpful on other units. Being the same size of work port, labeled A and B, gives me a pretty good indication that it is a motor. The other thing is this screw right here. This is a toe screw. When I thread that out, it hooks my A and B ports together to go up and around to the other side. Makes it kind of handy. So you can tow a unit where the oil can flow through the unit without it having to turn. So for example, if your engine dies and you needed to pull the unit into the shop and it was either too heavy or the wheels would just skid, you would unthread this a few turns and the unit would then free roll. All those make it out to be a motor. Now there's really no difference between an axial piston pump and an axial piston motor. All basically the very same parts and everything inside is very similar other than a few things like the A and B port and as well as the valve plate. If I look at this valve plate here, I have these little armored webbing inside. So I have them on both sides of the valve port, A and B. Kind of tells me that being that it's armored, it's designed to hold pressure on either side. If this was a unidirectional pump or a unidirectional motor, then one side would most likely be unarmored. It would just be a big happy face. The other thing is the fishtails. The fishtails point in the direction of rotation. And if I look at that, there's four fishtails and they point in different directions. So this unit is meant to spin clockwise or counterclockwise. We're going to talk about rebuilding hydraulic components, what to look for, and where to spend your time and concentrate. So this fixed displacement bidirectional motor, I've actually, unfortunately, already started the rebuild. I'm actually at the stage of just getting ready to do a final clean and reassembly. I have reconditioned almost all of the parts except for this washer that serves as a wear plate for my aluminum uh, fixed displacement housing here. This wash plate is actually cast into the housing and made out of aluminum. So to withstand the forces, they just put this metal shim in there. And this shim is basically untouched. I did a very little touch up to see if it's flat and it, well, it's as flat as I'd expect it to be but there are some minor scratches and scuff marks from the shoes rotating on the plate. So this plate here, if this was a critical service, high tractive effort, low speed, meaning something that's heavy and is a drive and yet needs a lot of torque to either break out or push or do something like that so the motor spinning very very slowly with incredibly high pressure pushing on the pistons i would be worried about the leakage coming from underneath the slippers into this and i'd probably want to replace that this motor unfortunately or fortunately does not fall into that category it is a high speed fairly low pressure motor there is some pressure required to get the unit it's driving up to speed but the leakage that happens during that time is actually unimportant or sometimes even benefit beneficial to have the leakage so it's a little slower starting 
this motor is driving the vibrator on a pad foot packer or roller. Simple stuff. Uh, tearing down the shaft, you'll probably have a groove where the seal was riding. I have welded this up and machined it back down and we now have a nice fine finish there. This isn't where this motor was leaking externally into the vibrator. This wasn't where it was leaking though, but I did fix it due to it was getting a relatively deep groove in there. The other thing when you look at the motor, you're looking for if it's just plain worn out or antiqued as this one was, is looking for scratches in the parts, which we already talked about that. The sealing surface, the biggest thing is to concentrate on your leakage. If you can uh, control your leakage, that's all there is to really rebuilding a hydraulic component. So just look at everywhere that the component can leak, which is between the barrel and the valve plate. So those two sealing surface have to be a very fine finish. These two have been lapped. They really weren't in all that bad a shape, but they have uh, been lapped. I just hand lapped them. So gave them a fairly nice finish, near mirror finish, probably nicer than it really needs. The valve plate, hopefully we can focus and see this. I don't know, it's fairly, there's a small, Pit right here from embedded material and one over here again from embedded material I dug them out and lapped it there's a very small amount of cavitation erosion happening at the edge of that fishtail but again not worth replacing and other than that the plate cleaned up fairly nice so we're happy with that the barrel cleaned up beautifully very high quality steel each piston was in rough shape. The shoe, that is, was in rough shape. They were rounded on the corners. So this was very close to a catastrophic failure. I don't know how many hours it would last, quite a few at the pressures it was running, but it was getting close to a catastrophic failure. I flattened those out, increasing the surface area for the shoe to push on and limit the amount of leakage on it. So they should be okay now. Leakage between the piston ball and the shoe. Not much we can do about that. They're pressed together other than feel. Feeling if there's anything going on there. It's about all you can do uh, unless you replace them. High quality rotating assemblies you can't buy just the piston and shoe assembly. You have to buy the whole rotating group. And this unit is obsolete as well as probably not worth spending that kind of money on and it's actually still in pretty darn good shape if i could get some talent i could uh, install the piston back in keep your piston in the same hole as a barrel in high quality pumps or hand fit in between high quality motors same thing this one here i doubt that i doubt these are hand fit just due to the application and the quality that this motor seems to be produced in. The housing, make sure it's, sh um, it's shape still okay. I did have to repair the outer seal surface here. That's where it was actually leaking, was between the outside of the seal and the housing itself. Uh, Knuckle Dragon Barbarian put this seal in and damaged the housing incredibly bad, so I actually had to sleeve it. And other than that, the only other place that we, uh, between the barrel and the piston itself, just looking for scoring. You could polish them. There is some fine grooves. And this one, I can't even measure them with my mics. They're not even a tenth of a thou of thickness there. It's mostly just etching, I believe, from the oil. So I'm not at all worried about it. And that's it. To rebuilding it now we just do a final clean very cleanliness is incredibly important way worse than for an engine hydraulic components especially high pressure piston stuff requires to be incredibly clean 
assembly and possibly even filtering the oil if you've had a catastrophic failure somewhere else and there is signs of contamination damage to anywhere there was leakage.